Hey folks, Rich Heilman here, Developer Advocate, SAP Devs. So Happy New Year, everybody. I think uh, 2023 will definitely be a good year for ABAP Cloud. We are planning to do a lot around ABAP Cloud this year, so it should be a lot of fun. And of course, our development teams are working super hard to bring you the very best of ABAP Cloud now and in the future. ABAP Cloud was mentioned in the SAP TechEd keynotes in November. And Boris Gephardt has posted another blog post a few weeks back that gives us a very good overview of ABAP Cloud and what it means to us as ABAP developers. If you're still unsure about ABAP Cloud, please read Boris's blog post as he outlines what it is, the evolution of ABAP Cloud, how you can use it, and what's included. And of course, where you can find more information. Hey everybody, Happy New Year. I wanted to give you a quick update from the SAP BTP Kima team. In order to address a security concern, we are releasing the Cloud Native Interface Plugin, CNI Plugin for short. We are making a change to the role-based access control that happens when you use the Istio-init container setup. Magdalena Streck has published a blog post listing out all the mandatory steps that must be taken to ensure your production workloads will continue to operate after we move to Kima version 2.11 in late February 2023. Please follow the steps in this blog post to test your workloads in a dev environment before moving to a production environment in February 2023. Again, if you are using the Istio-init service mesh setup, it is very important that you try out and test the Istio CNI plugin as soon as possible and then get ready to migrate your production workloads by the end of February 2023. If you have any questions, please see the attached blog post and ask them there. Just before Christmas, Philip Mothelstone and the SAP HANA Academy did their definitive training video on getting started with SAP Build Apps using a free tier service in SAP BTP. Philip goes through the whole process from setting up entitlements to running the booster, to launching SAP Build Apps. He also goes through creating your first app, most notably using a destination to connect to your SAP backend. The video is one of 17 videos as of today that are part of the SAP BTP onboarding series, which covers all kinds of things from global accounts, sub-accounts, destinations, schema, security, the BTP CLI, and a whole lot more. You might have missed this during the holiday period, so we wanted to remind you that the December 2022 release of the SAP Cloud Application Programming Model, CAP, is available. As usual, this release contains lots of enhancements and fixes far more than one can cover in a single news item. So let me give you just a few of the highlights. Perhaps most excitingly, the GraphQL adapter is now released as an open source package on GitHub. It's in the CAP.js organization, so head on over there to check it out. Our favorite pre-built definitions for the countries, currencies, and language entities are now in their own package on NPM at SAP-CDS common content. And you can use this package directly in your CDS definitions. There's a new comprehensive CAP sample app that demonstrates multi-tenancy. It's accompanied by a deep dive blog post series and also a GitHub repo in the SAP samples organization. There's a new performance modeling guide too, with a wealth of tips and tricks and lots of information about what to do and what to avoid. And there's plenty more in this release. Head over to the usual place, the CapHire documentation, to check out all the details. SAP is pushing customers of workflow management and intelligent robotic process automation to move to SAP build process automation. In December, it was announced that IRPA and workflow management would be retired as of June 15th of this year. And just this week, it was announced that IRPA will be removed from the trial edition of SAP BTP as of January 31st. 
<laughs> SAP Process Automation was released about a year ago and has feature parity with both IRPA and workflow management. IRPA bots can be migrated to SAP Process Automation as long as they do not use the Desktop Studio. Such bots can still be migrated into Cloud Studio, the new version of Desktop Studio, and then into SAP Build Process Automation. SAP Build Process Automation has released separate migration guides for migrating IRPA bots and migrating workflow, uh, workflows into SAP Build Process Automation. I will link to them in the description. And a series of enablement sessions are planned for later this year. And in the description, I will also link to a blog that you can subscribe to to get updates on the times and locations of those sessions. A new quarterly release of SAP HANA Cloud is now available. Among all the new features, here are my top five. First, renovated tooling for SAP HANA Cloud. Tools are evolving to become a unified environment, including capabilities provided by SAP HANA Cockpit, SAP HANA Cloud Central, and SAP HANA Database Explorer. Talking about SAP Database Explorer, there have been a couple of new features included there as well, like new menu options to generate SQL statements for JSON collections, create, select, insert. Moreover, a JSON viewer now integrated. New features in calculation views include filter mapping, retaining query snapshots, and do-to-do -do operations during design time. Fourth, users are now able to create a graph workspace based on the edge tables only. In case the graph's vertices do not have attributes, but just a key, this conveniently allows you to create graph workspaces without having to generate dummy vertex tables as it was in the past. And fifth, since our Q4 release, we provide the functionality to schedule in HANA Deployment Infrastructure or HDI. This enables you to create scheduled jobs and allows you to use time-based events for calling a start procedure. For all the developers using Apple devices, I would like to mention as well that installer of the SAP HANA Cloud now natively supports Apple chip as well. With the December 22 release of the SAP HANA Cloud tools, you can now develop Kima applications that work with HANA HDI containers and schemas. Tom Slee's blog post explains the essential part of what you need to do to consume the SAP HANA Cloud service through the service binding. And at the end, I would like to draw your attention to a new open source project called SAP HANA Compatibility Layer for MongoDB Wire Protocol. It enables you to use any MongoDB driver or MongoDB shell as if you were connected with MongoDB, but uses SAP HANA JSON document store at the storage as a storage engine uh, instead. For now, basic CRUD operations, collection methods, and database methods are supported. Happy coding and peaceful 2023 to you.